So thank all of you for coming today morning and I'll speak on the topic of are our mistakes part of Krishna's plan. So we will take some pastimes in the Srimad Bhagavatam where <coughs> either some devotees do some mistakes or something turns out to be a mistake and then how Krishna works things out. So I will <coughs> talk about this in two terms. First is we understand what do we mean by Krishna's plan and then we understand what mistakes mean and then we will try to see how these two come together. Uh, <coughs> A plan is different from a purpose. Plan and purpose are related, but they are not the same. Say, if we consider, okay, I planned this event properly. That means, if we want to organize a program, then, okay, I want to do this, do this, do this, do this. That's my plan. Now, the purpose is, the program should all go off well. And if to serve that purpose, if you are done planning properly, then there is plan A and there is plan B. There might be plan C also. Okay, if this, this goes wrong, we have this backup. If this goes wrong, we have this backup. So, Krishna's purpose is specific. He wants us to grow spiritually. We are all souls on a multi-life journey of spiritual evolution. And Krishna's purpose is our spiritual growth. And that requires us to make right choices. So in that sense, if we are making wrong choices, that is not Krishna's purpose. But is it Krishna's plan? Sometimes if we equate the two plan and purpose, then it becomes confusing. But the plan is actually bigger than the purpose. That means even if this purpose is not served in a particular way, something else can be done. Just like in an educational system. The purpose of the educational system is to help the students get promoted from one level to the next level till they get the degree and they graduate. But if some students fail, then the failing of the students is not the purpose of the school. But there is a plan for dealing with them also. Okay, You can do this subject again or you can do this course again or you may have to do the whole year again, whatever it is. There is, when the students make a mistake, that does have its consequences but that consequence is not outside the educational plan of the school the school has the capacity to accommodate so in that sense the plan of the uh, of the school is is for is continued or is is capable of acting whether the student succeeds or the student fails whether in a multiple choice exam, whether a student, sometimes we have these interactive multiple choice exams, where if you give a right answer, the next question is tougher. And if you give a wrong answer, the next question is easier. So they are meant to determine what level of proficiency a particular person is at. So, so, so now in, that means the both contingencies are prepared for in that interactive exam. That whether you give a right answer or a wrong answer, so the exam plan includes both. Now of course the exam's purpose is that the students give right answers or at least give as many right answers as required by which they can clear the exam. So similarly Krishna's plan is that we grow spiritually and then for that purpose his plan is that we make choices that enhance our spiritual growth, that promote our spiritual growth. But if we somehow make inadvisable choices we make wrong choices Krishna's plan includes that so Krishna's is a, this differentiation the, if you understand if you understand that the universe is like a university in this understanding the universe is like a university then there is an educational system in which Krishna has a plan and Krishna has a purpose. So our mistakes are not Krishna's purpose. Krishna doesn't want us to commit mistakes. But uh, Krishna uh, can include our mistakes in his plan also. So in that sense, his plan is not like a rigid fixed outline. It has flexibility which can incorporate us doing some mistakes also. Now, uh, going further, so this is the one perspective of Krishna's plan. 
and it's a dynamic or interactive plan which reciprocates uh, with the way we act so that the ultimate purpose is served now moving forward how do we define a mistake mm. so <clears throat> a mistake in the mahabharata it is said that how do we analyze whether it is some action is right or it is wrong mm. there are three broad ways of analyzing it one ultimately you could say shastra is the manual for life now if we are if we are traveling along a road and the google map says go left but then we go right that's an obvious mistake so we can say scripture is like a map for life if we take guidance from scripture it will help us to make right decisions however scripture doesn't give us specific directions always life is so complex and the kind of situations that we face in today's world are so different from the cultural setting in which scripture was spoken that we may not get specific directions for our specific situations some are black and white and this is what we should do this is what we should not do so but scripture gives us broad principles that we need to apply in our life so now after we have internalized the broad message of scripture then when we have to decide what is right and what is wrong how do we decide that there are three broad parameters for it there is intent content and consequence now something is right or wrong based on why am i doing it if i am doing something to hurt others then it is bad now krishna says in bhagavad gita anudvega karam vakyam satyam priyahitam jayat that speak in a way that is not agitating to others uh, if somebody is very hurt by some event then at that time whether to talk about that event or not talk about that event that event has happened it's true uh, uh, somebody is loud one has done, betrayed them some something terrible has happened in their life and sometimes they may need to talk so that it helps in the healing sometimes the talking may be like scratching the wound so sometimes you now we some something bad has happened in their life and some people speak about that publicly just to embarrass the other person so it may be true but the intent is bad so which reaction is right or wrong can be determined by intent then the second major is <laughs> content scripture tells us that certain things are moral certain things are immoral so speaking lies is for example immoral cheating is immoral so there is a cat in the content what exactly is the action some actions are right and some actions are wrong that's in terms of content so there are moral categories say for example we talk about the four regulatory principles now these are actions which which a tradition considers to be wrong now moving forward uh, so this is a category this is a category this is right this is wrong and then the third is consequence consequence means sometimes we may think this is the right action but it may turn out to be the wrong action say going back to the traffic metaphor that we have two paths to take you know this is going to take 35 minutes this is going to take 32 minutes so i take the 32 minute part but it turns out that the traffic over there increases maybe there's a road accident or whatever so then i realize oh if i had gone by that path it would been better so then at that time based on the information i had it was the right decision but in terms of the consequence it turned out to be wrong if i taken that decision it would have been better if i taken that path it would have been, i would have reached earlier so sometimes actions their rightness or wrongness can be evaluated in terms of consequence now if we consider among all these three things what is in our power primarily is the intent we can all try to have a good intention in doing things now of course good intention alone although important it is not enough we we talk about intent in two distinct ways one is say we say krishna is bhava grahi janardana that he just looks at the emotion of the heart he looks at the devotion so if we do something with a devotional disposition then it pleases krishna and so if we consider say shabari's offering the berries which she had bitten to uh ram that's from the content point of view it is wrong how can you offer a jhuta food to krishna but from the intent point of view it is glorious hmm? 
So sometimes something may become right because of the intent, even if the content is not right. At the same time, so the one point is Krishna just looks at the intent. The from the content point of view, the squirrel that was carrying some uh, dust particles for the bridge, she was not doing much. The consequence was okay. How much was it helping? Not really much. The content okay, it was the right action, but it cons but still Lord Ram appreciated because she was having the right intention to serve. So one side we say that intent is important, and intent is what pleases pleases Krishna. But there is also the other side where we say that if some people do social service and then we often say good intentions alone are not good enough. Prabhupada gives the example that there was a girl, elder sister and his younger brother. His younger brother had got typhoid and he had been told don't take any fried items and he was begging give me fried items, give me fried items. So the sister wanted to make the brother happy and she gave him some pakodas and he says, health situation worsened and he had to be rushed to a hospital. So his mother was chastising that girl. Why did he give? Uh, give this to Prabhupada said this happened in his neighborhood. So here what is happening? The intent may be good, but the content was not good. If my brother is in distress, I want to help. So similarly, if somebody want somebody is patient is in great pain and a surgeon does surgery. But a surgeon is not there if a compounder says I will do surgery. I want to relieve this patient of pain. So intent we could say for pleasing Krishna, intent is good enough. But for getting a result in this world, intent alone is not enough. Hmm? We also need content. The squirrel, her intent in pleasing Lord Ram is great. But from the practical point of view, would the squirrel have been able to build a bridge for Lord Ram? No. Now of course we can say Lord Ram can empower the squirrel and even through the squirrel he can build. That is his miraculous intervention. But in this world, if we want to do things for Krishna's service, if, you want, if our goal is only to please Krishna, then intent alone is enough. But if our goal is also to do something tangible for Krishna in this world, then content is also important. So some devotees may be very great devotees, but they may not be great speakers. They may not be great singers. Now if, if we want to give a class which attracts people in this world, if we want to give, do a kirtan which attracts people in this world, then we have to see what speakers, what speaking ability is there, what singing ability is there. Now, they may sing out of tune and they may please Krishna because their intent is great. But in this world, if you want to have a result, then we also have to look at the content properly. So intent and content both are important. Sometimes if we just do something with the right intention, that alone does not necessarily mean things will always work out right. It is our responsibility to have the right intention, but it is also our responsibility to try to make sure that the content of our action is also right, that the action that we are doing is also right. And, and life does not come with a guarantee of good decisions. Even if I have the right intent, even if I have studied scripture properly to understand, okay, this is right, this is wrong. Sometimes what may seem to be right in one situation may by uh, future developments turn out to be wrong. Hmm? So that means from by consequence, if something does not work out to be right, then okay, let us not do it. Srila Prabhupada, when he was in India, he brought his western disciples to India and in the west, the primary model was uh, for preaching was do kirtans and by doing kirtans in the street, by distributing books in the street, attract people, people come to the temples and they move into the temple and they become devotees. So when he came to India and the devotees started doing the same thing, when they were in Bengal and they were doing kirtans on the streets, at that time some people started throwing money at them. In Bengal there, there is kirtan mandali which just goes around and in, in even now and traditionally also Vaishnavism was seen as a as a beggar's excuse for earning a livelihood. It was seen like that, quite. No, people who don't have way to, any way to earn a living, they go out and dance and do some performance and people give them some money. So when Prabhupada, when the devotees told that money was thrown at us, Prabhupada says, stop going for kirtans. He says, we don't want to be lumped with these people. Now in intent, glorifying the Lord is wonderful. In content, Harinam Sankirtan is Yuga Dharma. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself did that. But if the consequence was turning out to be wrong, then Prabhupada said, stop it. 
Now, it's not that that stop doesn't mean permanently stop it, but that circumstantially we may have to decide that. So, uh, even with the best of intentions and even with the best content, sometimes the consequence may turn out to be wrong because of a particular circumstance. So, our mistakes can fall in these three. If we may have a wrong intent, we may have a wrong content or what we may do may have a wrong consequence. Now actually we live in an interconnected world and because we live in an interconnected world, so our mistakes do not affect us alone, our mistakes affect others also and <coughs> then say uh, somebody commits a serious mistake, so somebody is driving a car and they just uh, are neglectful for a moment and the car goes and hits uh, the curb and there is an accident and now only the car, not only the car gets damaged, the person gets injured but the people with them will also get injured. So now their momentary inattention is going to cost others also. So because we live in an interconnected world, uh, our mistakes are, they, they affect others. So then if somebody else is, if person A commits a mistake and B is hurt, then is bees getting hurt so a part of Krishna's plan? Is bees getting hurt because of because of uh, A's mistake, or is it because of Krishna's plan? Mm -hmm. So now here we have to understand that uh, there are many factors involved in how things work out. That means that when that normally we talk about the law of karma as action leads to reaction. However, karma is not that simple. It is not that it is a linear chain, this action and this reaction. There is in between this cause and this effect, there is a long chain of factors involved and that chain primarily involves destiny. That destiny of course is just the accumulation of our past karma. Our, our destiny is simply the accumulation of our past karma and because of that an action A may not lead to the ac result B immediately. So often our past karma determines the lag between the action and reaction. So simple, uh, I'll give two simple examples. Say some people smoke and they smoke and smoke and smoke lifelong and nothing happens to them. I live a healthy body. Some people start smoking and within one year they start having severe respiratory tract problems, they may even get lung cancer. Now smoking is the same. Some people they have weak digestion, even little eating problem, their the stomach gets upset or some people are very prone to say gaining weight. They little eat, eat a little bit more, they, their body balloons up. Some other people they just eat anything and everything, they treat their tongue like a conveyor belt. <laughs> <laughs> and still their, their, their digestion goes on well, they still remain slim and attractive, nothing seems to happen to them. <laughs> now why is this? Because some people by their past karma are meant to have a healthy body. Now what, that, that is the karmic installment that they have. That is the, they have done good karma by in the past which, by which they will have healthy body. So now even if they do unhealthy activities now, th there are going to be reactions for that. But those reactions may not come immediately. Those reactions may not come in this lifetime also. So simil on the other hand, some people are meant to have a sickly body. That is the way, that is the karma that they have. That even a small provocation, small stimulus, small mistake can cause a big reaction. Okay. So there is the past karma which plays into this also. So now in this case, okay that person is overeating or eating inappropriately, that is a mistake. But if in one case the reaction may come much more, in another case the reaction may not come at all practically speaking, at least at that time. So here what has happened, the, the actions that we do, their consequences are determined not just by our, the, by, the, by either the intent of the action or the content of the action or the, even the consequence, it is also past karma that affects what result will come out. So the consequence is not just by intent or content. Now, have, uh, so the, this becomes further complicated when we consider two people are involved. Mm -hmm. So when two people are involved, then person A does something wrong. So when earlier I said person A does something wrong and they get the result or sometimes they don't get the result. 
that's by their karma similarly person a may do something wrong and person b may get the consequence now when b gets the consequence without having done anything wrong or their only mistake was say somebody somebody say people go for a party and after party they are just going back to their home and while they are going back to their home uh they don't know that the person who is driving the car is drunk they think he is appears to be sober but that person is drunk and they drive now was it person's b's mistake that they they got into a car which uh, where the person was driving well if they had known we could say it was their mistake if they had not known it's in a sense not their mistake then we say it's their fate it just happened that so now fate is not something arbitrary or cruel fate is simply the result of our own past karma coming upon us so in this case b may have made a mistake or b may not have made a mistake but b gets some consequence over there so in the in retrospect somebody may say decide that okay in future if i even suspect that somebody drinks then i will not step into their car i'll find some other way to go that's something which we can learn so we always need to have a learning attitude but sometimes it's it becomes very complicated what will be pers- what action will have what consequence so so all this i'm talking about i talked about our, the topic was are our mistakes part of krishna's plan so i'm and this whole discussion is towards the point that uh, understanding krishna's plan is not simple because plan and purpose are two different things and understanding what is a mistake is also not very simple so let's now if we, if we discuss these three things intent content and consequence so we don't know what consequence is going to come so if something happens as a consequence some con- result result some some decision turns out to be bad some action turns out to be have a to have a unfortunate consequence and if we had chosen the best decision if we had chose made the decision using our best intelligence at that time then there is no need to worry about it just move on shri prabhupad writes in the first canto purport that there is if things are beyond human control then there is nothing to regret if things if things go wrong beyond human control then there is nothing to regret in that so oh, you know, we are we are we, we we have kept maintained our car well we are driving our car ni- nicely but suddenly in the middle of the road the car breaks fail and there's accident there's nothing we could have done at that time so we just accept this as fate and we see that this is krishna must be having some purpose behind this i'll talk about what krishna's purpose may be a little later but if something something which was well thought out and then done has a un- unforeseen consequence then that is not held against us because we we did the we had the proper intention we did the proper analysis to choose the right action there's nothing to regret when things are beyond human control so we don't have to agonize over the mistakes generally the nature of the human mind is that when some mistakes happen when something goes wrong i want to use the word something goes wrong in, in as a matter of consequence something goes wrong we always want to want to have someone to blame if you see the three modes of material nature they make us act in different ways so we could say in the mode of goodness we try to seek understanding we try to seek knowledge we try to seek insight maybe you can come ahead the words can sit behind hmm in the mode of goodness we try to seek understanding in the mode of passion we try to seek seek power power control and in the mode of ignorance we try to seek scapegoats someone to blame so in goodness we try to seek understanding insight explanation in passion we seek power so if something has gone wrong the whole idea is if some mistake has happened just cover it up if you can fix it fix it if you can't fix it up at least cover it up and nobody able to should, should be able to see it so many times when some things go wrong uh, the government agencies or big business corporates they try to cover it up cover it up so that, that's passion now we don't want to take responsibility we just want to cover it up 
in ignorance we just want to seek a scapegoat someone to blame oh this person because of his mistake this happened now or sometimes you may blame god also because of it happened it happened now this is unhealthy blaming someone else blaming god this is unhealthy mm. blaming god is especially unhealthy and i'll talk about that a little later but uh, more but sometimes we may blame ourselves now holding ourselves responsible is different from blaming ourselves when we start blaming ourselves it is like beating us why did you do that you are such a big fool you are a idiot you are good for nothing so when the when we we accept responsibility for something that is wrong that means okay the, the, i am here this action is here and i i made this i made this wrong decision and i accept responsibility for that but so we are acknowledging our responsibility but still there is a distance between us and our action but when we start blaming ourselves we start identifying ourselves with that action itself and then we start uh, losing faith in ourselves we start thinking that i am good for nothing i am useless so failure is an event in our life but for the mind in ignorance failure becomes the defining event of life so i start defining myself by that failure and when that happens people get inferiority complex they get self esteem issues they go into chronic depression just become incapable of doing anything so so blaming if blaming ourselves discourages us so much that we can't do anything in life then that is also unhealthy so we have to uh, in the more so okay i made a mistake but my life goes on and i can rectify it in future i want to i want to learn from this mistake and the mistake will have its consequences but blaming ourselves perpetually just beating ourselves up that is of no use so why am i talking about these three modes uh, in terms of we are trying to analyze what exactly is a mistake so if we do something and it has a bad consequence we maybe we didn't analyze properly then we are responsible if we analyze properly and still had a bad consequence we just understand it is fate so sometimes what about the intent sometimes impulses come upon us and those impulses just force us to do something like say parikshit maharaj at that time he was so uh, he was so tired he was so thirsty just needed some water and when the water when they didn't give the water when chamik rishi did not respond he just lost his cool and in exasperation he took a snake a dead snake and put it on the king it's like normally a uh, guest is meant to be welcomed by the host but here but he says you are not welcoming me at all here i will welcome you and he put a garland but the garland was of a snake now here you see this was out of character this was not what parikshit maharaj would normally ever do so all of us sometimes life catches us at weak moments now some person may be normally very calm composed gentle but you know one thing has gone wrong in their life second thing has gone wrong third thing has gone wrong fourth thing has gone wrong fifth thing has gone wrong and then we tell something to them and we happen to be 10th person and then their limit is crossed <laughs> <laughs> and then bam they explode <laughs> why are you troubling me so much can't you deal with this yourself do i have to deal with the whole world's problems <laughs> hey, what happened <laughs> it's a small big reaction <laughs> so for them what happened uh, we don't know the background the nine things went wrong in their life uh, at that time and they were just at a weak moment at that time so somehow parikshit was caught in a weak moment see normally the anarthas last if you see greed if we see the object that stimulates that anartha is the object that is the target of the anartha also if if somebody is lusty and they are attracted to a particular person particular sense object and that's where they want their desire goes if somebody is greedy no I, i want this i want this i want this that's where their desire also goes but with uh, but with respect to anger it's slightly different the the trigger of the anger and the target of the anger can sometimes be different 
इवेंट ए और पर्सन ए मेक्स मी एंग्री समटाइम्स समटाइम्स यू मे फाइंड वी गो वर्क एट ऑफिस एंड द बॉस इज अ वेरी डिसएग्रीएबल मोड now it may have happened the boss had a fight with their spouse and now that anger they don't express in the in their home but they come and express it their subordinates so what has happened the trigger of the anger and the target of the anger can be different so now for parikshit maharaj at that time the it, it, the trigger was he was already tired he was already thirsty it been a long day he had been fighting he had been uh, traveling in the forest and then suddenly when this king did not when the sage did not offer him any reception he was just so annoyed that in exasperation he put that garland around his head so that so in anger the trigger and the target can be different now it is definitely a mistake on his part is infraction so uh, what he did was wrong and uh, but the consequence that he got was devastating it is my it's a breach of etiquette if it be a live snake that's a serious thing but it's a dead snake there's no harm and shamik rishi also he did not he just so he just came out of his trance and he saw what is this snake he just tossed it away he did not take it seriously but shrungi took it very seriously this is how dare the kshatriya who is meant to respect brahmanas disrespect brahmana like that and he cursed him he will die in 7 days Die in seven days. He said that. Now this is completely a disproportionate punishment. One of the principles in justice is that the punishment has to be proportionate to the crime. But when the heat, in the heat of the moment that is there, at that time one may just prescribe a excessive punishment. So that is what Shringi did. And then Parishit Maharaj it was. it was at one time moment devastating at one moment he was the king of the world the most powerful person and he was not just powerful he was popular he was virtuous he was doing so much good to the world and the next moment he was cursed to die in 7 days so it's terrible there was a mistake on his part but the mistake led to a devastating consequence now we could say it could be because of karma of course parikshit maharaj is a pure devotee and as a pure devotee Well, whatever happens is a part of Krishna's direct plan in their life. So you say we could say it was all orchestrated by Krishna. So this is we can see these actions at two levels, and I'll come to these two levels a little later. Uh, but at this point, if you want to analyze from the uh, moral perspective, well, then we can say Parikshit Maharaj made a mistake, but it's a small mistake. it could be a serious mistake because it's offending a brahmana disrespecting a brahmana but still that mistake did not merit the death sentence i was at a interfaith conference recently and there there was a baptist minister and the baptist minister he was actually uh, he had been wrongly framed there somebody else had done the crime but the attorney the witnesses they all conspired and he was framed for it and he was 25 years in jail 25 years and then while he was in jail he studied law he discovered christianity so christians had some organization by which they they support uh, people who are in the jail and then he found out the whole process okay if he has been wrongly sentenced how to what to do he contacted the right lawyers and then he proved the expose So now you say you know no mistake, but twenty five years in jail, it's such a terrible thing. So it was terrible. There's no mistake on his part, but he ended up in jail. But somehow there, he he came. He was uh, he was just an ordinary material person. There he came to God, and he was so inspired that by that now he's become a minister who shares the message of God. So sometimes in life, you know, because of no fault of ours, or because just we are just caught in the wrong situation somehow, we may get into big trouble. so at that time the trouble can just appear to be overwhelming but if if we don't lose hope if we try to be positive if we try to do something in that situation so sort of just feeling sorry for ourselves then something good can even come out of it now we can't say that losing 25 years is a good thing but it's a terrible thing but eventually you came up came out and if one comes closer to god one grows spiritually then that is good 
similarly for Parikshit Maharaj, being sentenced to death is bad. But good can come out of it. And it came out because he chose the right course of action, right response. This terrible thing happened, small mistake, big consequence. But what was his response? He did not get into feeling sorry for myself. Why did this have to happen to me? Why did this have to happen to me? Why did this have to happen to me? Or he did not mean how dare, dare I be punished for such a small thing. He just accepted this is the Lord's, this is a part of the Lord's plan. And he just decided to offer his life in surrender to the Lord. And that is how the Srimad Bhagavatam was spoken. The Srimad Bhagavatam is the knowledge that helped Parikshit Maharaj transcend material consciousness, transcend bodily entanglement. And not only did it help him, it helped everyone. It helped it helped, it helped millions of people for millennia because the narration of the Lord's pastimes are there to protect. They are there to ele elevate. They are there ultimately to liberate. So, uh, the it may be said that Parikshit Maharaj, uh, he was protected by, by the Lord when he was in his mother's womb. The Lord personally came and protected him. And we often glorify the Lord as a protector. But then if that Lord came and protected him in his mother's womb, why did that Lord not protect him when he was unfairly cursed like this? Yes, the Lord protected him even then. He came as the Srimad Bhagavatam. And as the Srimad Bhagavatam, he gave him shelter. And through the shelter of the Srimad Bhagavatam, although at the material level the result came, the consequence of the, the curse came about, his consciousness was no longer caught in the material level. His consciousness had risen to the spiritual level. So because his consciousness had risen to the spiritual level, he did not experience the pain of death. Rather, he was absorbed in Krishna, he was in ecstasy hearing the Bhagavatam and it said even Sandashta, even before the snake Takshaka bit him, he had already left his body. So the Takshak's bite caused his body to burn, but he had already left his body. He was absorbed in Krishna and he was liberated from the body. So the Lord's protection came, but it came at a spiritual level. So sometimes at a material level, some consequences may happen and it may appear as if it was a, it was a terrible thing that happened. But at a spiritual level, there is something entirely different going on. So mistakes may have consequences at the material level, but at a spiritual level, something bigger is happening. Now, uh, if we, now, till now I was talking about mistakes. Uh, actually, this class I'm going to continue tomorrow also. There's many subtleties in this, but I'll add one more point over here, and then we can have some questions. <clears throat> that there are mistakes at the material level, and there is bhakti at the spiritual level. Now, how does it work out? If we have devotion, it is said that devotion is never lost. Whatever devotion we... Neha bhikramana shosti pratyavayona vidyate. Even a little bhakti we are done, it will never be lost. On the other hand, uh, there is a law of karma, where material actions have material reactions. So, let's take two examples. Uh, in the Mahabharat, Bhishma is a very heroic very virtuous, very glorious person. But he does commit the mistake of siding with the Kauravas and remaining silent when uh, Draupadi is being dishonored. So, according to some analysis of the Mahabharata, it said that Bhishma, he had to suffer terribly. All the Kauravas were killed, but Bhishma had to live on a bed of arrows. Now we may see that picture and we think how transcendental Bhishma is. But actually it's painful when each arrow is going through his body, piercing through his body. So now some commentators say that that was because Bhishma was the eldest person in the family. It was his responsibility to have stopped the gambling match, to have stopped Draupadi's being dishonored because he did not forcefully stop it. That's why he had to bear this consequence. Now in the in the in the Brahma Sutra Bhashya, that is a commentary on the Vedanta Sutra written by Madhvacharya, he says that the epics, the itihasa, can be understood at three levels: the literal, the ethical, and the transcendental. 
the literal means this is simply the events that happened and if we just hear the narration of these events we will become purified about the ramayana said ek ek aksharam pumsam mahapatak nashanam just hearing it will free us from great sins it will purify us so it's, it's just just hear it literally and relish the past time you will get purified another level is ethical ethical means that we see that in this situation this person did this and we can learn ethical lessons how to act and how not to act so learning these ethical lessons is uh, also a very important lesson from the mahabharat or from the ramayana also and if we are to learn ethical lessons then we cannot learn any ethical lesson if we simply say everything is krishna's past everything is krishna's leela everything is orchestrated by krishna that is also one way of looking at things but that is not the only way of looking at things see in the bhagavad gita in the first chapter purports and the second chapter purports shri prabhupad treats arjuna somewhat differently in the first chapter prabhupad is saying see arjuna is so soft hearted and such soft heartedness is indicative that he is ripe for spiritual knowledge hmm and in the second chapter he says you know tears they are indication of indic ignorance it's everybody is suffering from skin disease because of which one is so attached to one's relatives and that ignorance that is there that ignorance will be dispelled by the lord so it seems that shri prabhupada is taking two different tacks you know first he is saying oh arjuna is such a good person he is so virtuous he is so soft hearted he is so thoughtful about the consequences of his actions he is saying he is crying he is attached to the body so now what is it you know, shri prabhupada uh, in his purports packs the purports with lessons that we can apply in our life you know, it's like uh, sometimes some cars some car advertisement says you get maximum mileage per liter of fuel so like that prabhupada gives us maximum mileage of knowledge with every purport <laughs> so shri so prabhupada's purpose is not to evaluate that this character is right or this is wrong prabhupada's purpose is to help us learn lessons for life so uh, if we have to learn lessons for life so on one uh, there are many cases in prabhupada's purport sometimes prabhupada says draupadi is so soft hearted that she wanted to uh, that because of her soft heartedness she wanted to forgive ashwatthama mm-hmm. but another purport he may say actually ashwatthama is a criminal he is doing a terrible crime he has to be punished and one cannot let sentiment come in the way of justice so now what is the point both are valid lessons and prabhupada is giving us both lessons now one lesson may apply at one particular point another lesson may apply at another particular point so madhusudan saraswati is a prominent uh, advaitic scholar but he was a de- he also had some devotional inclinations and is written some devotional compositions so in his gita commentary um, chakravarti pad also quotes at times there the, he says the whole purpose of the first chapter is to demonstrate arjuna's qualification for hearing the gita that arjuna he was kshatriya but he was not simply a kshatriya geared for action he was eager itching for a fight he was a kshatriya who was thoughtful so prabhupada is taking more or less that mood over there saying he is showing that first cha- the arjuna first chapter demonstrates arjuna's qualification for getting spiritual knowledge so i am talking here from the point of view of, from ethical analysis if we are doing then we don't have to get into who is right and who is wrong rather than putting it that this they did a right thing or they did a wrong thing we can say okay this is one lesson i can learn from the situation this is another lesson i can learn so with respect to bhishma pitamaha it could be said that his actions at one level are wrong he should have intervened at another level we can say it was because he remained silent that ultimately krishna was able to demonstrate that he is the only protector and draupadi despite having so many protectors she was protected only by krishna so both perspectives are right but if you are doing a ethical analysis saying that it's krishna's plan is not particularly helpful because then there is no ethical analysis to do everything is krishna's plan so here everything is krishna's plan but is everything is everybody serving krishna's purpose is everybody serving krishna's purpose so duryodhana he is also part of krishna's plan but he is not serving krishna's purpose you know dushasana when he is disrobing krishna disrobing Dur- uh, krishna that is dropadi's name also is krishna but uh, he that is not part of krishna's purpose 
it krishna is so expert that he can include even the villain villainous activities of certain souls in the purview of his plan he can make good come out of the bad also but krishna doesn't want people to do bad things krishna didn't want dushasana to do something wrong in fact we see duryodhana krishna himself went as shantidut means he did not want duryodhana to fight the war but when the war was decided then krishna his plan is so expansive so inclusive that it can include the villainous actions of people also krishna can bring good out of the bad so now bhishma we could say from the ethical analysis perspective it was what he did was wrong and there was a reaction for that so but krishna came to bhishma at the end and not only did krishna not only was krishna there with him to help him uh, uh, make the final transition but krishna still considered bhishma worthy of receiving instruction from so that means krishna did not make bhishma's mistake as a permanent label on him and condemn him for that so it is that the summary of this whole analysis and narrative is that you know krishna just because we are devotees that does not mean our mis- all our mistakes will be excused but just because we have committed mistakes does not mean uh, that our devotion will be forgotten that our service will be forgotten both will go together if we do mistakes there will be consequences if we have practices bhakti that bhakti will protect us so as devotees we can't say just because i do something with devotional intention it's wonderful no even if i have devotional intention i have to also act properly i have to use my intelligence once when the devotees did the rath yatra in london at that time they had made a elaborate plan they wanted to the devotees in london they wanted to do big thing so they made a huge rath rath cart and the first time when they did it they took all the dimensions from the rath, rath yatra that was happening in, uh, in america and they went there and they made the rath cart and then as the rath yatra was about to start the cart was so big that the wheel collapsed <laughs> and it was a big flop show so oh, then uh, brahmanand through wrote to shila prabhupad prabhupad did this rath yatra fail because of our poor devotion Rupa said it was no it was because of your poor engineering <laughs> 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 so the intent was to glorify krishna but the content also has to be right now oh we want to do a big festival for krishna that's fine but you have to also have take care of the logistics so now prabhupada appreciated the devotional intention yes you want to do good things for krishna but at a material level if our if our intention to glorify krishna is there that's wonderful but at a practical level the material level the content is not right that will also have its consequences so therefore the um, uh, for us it is our responsibility to use our intelligence not only to uh, uh, we have to have try to have purity or pure intention but we also have to use our intelligence to make sure the content of what we are doing is right otherwise there will be our intention to glorify krishna is good but for the good to manifest in this world the content also has to be right and for that we have to do the proper analysis we have to do the proper get the proper education uh, i was at one one community where they are building a huge temple and now this temple is so big it's such a multi million dollar project and they don't have that big a congregation so the leaders uh, one of the devotees there was asking me we had a question answer session that you know so should we go for this big project the prabhupad said you know we should go and we should uh, sh- shoot the rhino now of course now rhinos are endangered species so <laughs> 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 so i think was shamsundar prabhu who wrote a book yeah. so he changed so changed shooting the rhino to chasing the rhino <laughs> <laughs> so chasing the rhino or catching the rhino so whatever it is mm. but so is it that the mood you know we should oh we should do big th- prabhupad wanted us to do big things and should depend on krishna and do big things so yes uh, that is true prabhupad wanted to do big things but prabhupad also planned things properly prabhupad you, now if you look at prabhupad how often has prabhupad quoted that uh, shoot the rhino that was more for a one time event they wanted to do a big pandal program in mumbai 
that is the time it's not a constant code that prabhupada would make again and again so for a one time event if it if it works out well that's wonderful if it doesn't work out okay that's okay some small event work out it's also fine but a temple is not a one time building a temple is not a one time event it's a enduring it's a project which not only we have to do now to build the temple but after that we have to maintain the temple and maintaining the temple requires finance requires manpower requires logistics so i i've been to so many temples where the devotees enthusiastically build a big temple and now they don't have the congregation so the whole congregation is struggling to just maintain the temple uh, financially maintain the temple maintain the deity worship and then the preaching has gone down because of that. devotees are feeling burdened so our intention may be very good oh i want to build a big temple for krishna but content is there to evaluate when shila prabhu i was talking about this with giriraj maharaj recently so he was telling prabhupada was so pragmatic that when he, we wanted to build a magnificent temple in rindavan but his idea was he also build that mbt that that trust is there my friend now trust where he said that that will act like a guest house people will come and through the money from that we will be able to fund the temple even if this doesn't even if we don't get charity even if we don't get donations we'll have a arrangement so prabhupad wanted traditionally it said brahmanas depended on charity but charity is unpredictable so what the brahmanas would do is how were the brahmanas maintained the kings would give land in charity to the deities and on the land uh, there would be tillers who would till the land and they would get a part portion of the produce but that land is said to belong to the deities and the food that was offered the food that was grown over there was offered to the deities and the priest families would be maintained by that and also those the, that some of the portion can be could be sold also but the point was charity is important but there also has to be sustainability so we have to think not just about the intent but also the content when we look at that uh, then we can make wise decisions and just the intent being good enough is not necessarily a guarantee that the decision will be good so uh, tomorrow i will talk more about how our how what we can work on on our intent on our content and when our past by our past karma some complications happen when somebody else does something wrong when basically uh, things seem to be going wrong in our life how to see krishna's plan over there and how to be a part of that plan by pursuing his purpose we'll, i'll discuss that in tomorrow's class i'll summarize so i spoke today on the topic of are our mistakes a part of krishna's plan started by talking about the difference between plan and purpose in a school the purpose is to educate and elevate the students to higher grade but if a student fails there's a plan for them also so similarly krishna's purpose is not that we commit mistakes but if we commit mistakes that is included in krishna's plan so like in interactive exams give a wrong answer easier question uh, right answer tougher question purpose is to elevate the students so like that krishna's plan is flexible it can accommodate our mistakes krishna's purpose is that we grow spiritually but if we make wrong choices it's not that it's such a terrible thing that we are now not krishna doesn't care for other there's no plan of krishna there is krishna's plan always there for us then i talked about mistakes how do we evaluate what is a mistake that right? it can be the mahabharat says at one level we say it is by shastra we should learn from shastra right or wrong but there are so many complexities in our life that shastra may not give a direct instruction for us in our situation so there is a, a rightness or wrongness can be evaluated through three things the intent the content and the consequence why am i doing something what exactly am i doing and what is the result of what i do so <clears throat> the sometimes i may choose a road which seems to have lesser traffic but it the traffic becomes more and the consequence turns out to be wrong so sometimes despite our best efforts the action gives a wrong consequence so prabhupada says if something uh, if things go wrong beyond human control then there's nothing to regret but we still want to learn and prepare sometimes we just get into a car with somebody is driving drunk and we meet with the accident in the future we'll be very cautious whose car i get into mm, so uh, we learn from consequence but if it, there's no there is no mistake on our part in that sense the action is a mistake but we are not responsible there's no need to regret it uh, in the mode of goodness when bad things happen when mistakes happen we try to gain understanding in mode of passion we either try to fix it quickly or we want to cover it up in the mode of ignorance we simply want to look for a scapegoat 
we blame others, we blame God, or we blame ourselves. The difference between uh, accepting responsibility for a wrong and blaming ourselves. Blaming means we just beat ourselves up and we become demoralized. So failure is an event in our life. Failure doesn't have to be the defining event of our life, and we are not failures just because we have met some failures in our life. Then I discussed about uh, the relationship between intent and content. In bhakti, we say just the intention is all that matters. Shabari, uh, she her fruits were bitten, so content was wrong, but intent was good. That's true. But at the material level, if you want the results, then along with the intent, the content is also important. For satisfying Krishna, intent alone is enough. But the squirrel alone couldn't have built a bridge for Ram. The content also has to be there. So I discussed about uh, how karma comes into the picture. Sometimes uh, uh, a small mistake on our part can lead to a disastrous consequence. For Parikshit Maharaj, it was a small indiscretion. And it was with respect to anger, the trigger of the anger and the target of the anger can sometimes be different. So when we are caught at a, long, uh, at a weak moment, which which happens because of karma, then there might be overreaction. I talked about how action leads to reaction, but there is past karma which determines when which action will lead to what reaction. So some people may eat a lot and not maintain their health and figure. Some people may eat a little and spoil their health or figure. So that's uh, karma plays into the picture. So we can look at our situation and decide. Okay, for me this action is for me. I have to be very cautious in eating. For this person, so they okay. They can just eat what they want. So content may be different for different people based on karma. Now in bhakti, uh, intent is important, but the content also shapes the consequence. So we took, took Bhishma Pitama's um, situation from the when we study scripture, we don't want to judge the characters who is right and who is wrong, but we want to learn lessons for ourselves. So from the literal perspective, it's all purifying because it's all a, a part of Krishna's lila. But everybody there may not be serving Krishna's purpose. So we want to analyze from ethical perspective what is what we can do, how what how we can make right decisions. So Bhishma Pitama's silence was wrong. So Krishna did not did not overlook his mistake just because he was a devotee. But at the same time, Krishna did not overlook his devotion because he committed a mistake. So he had the consequence that he had to suffer on the arrow bed, but Krishna gave him inner strength by which he could tolerate the pain and Krishna gave him his own darshan, Krishna gave him the knowledge, the composure, the consciousness by which he could speak spiritual knowledge and material knowledge for everyone's benefit. So for us as devotees, uh, when we are trying to act, if somehow a mistake happens, we try to focus on doing our part rather than analyzing too much. We can try to analyze and learn but we focus on uh, right now how can I best serve Krishna? If we have that attitude, then even through difficulties, we'll move forward positively. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, please. Sometimes a situation um, actually come, came up where um, the devotee was given responsibility for taking care of someone's pet. And due to negligence, the uh, living entity got killed. The person taking care of him was so uh, completely traumatized and beating themselves so hard um, and becoming hysterical, traumatized, almost and vomiting. As um, a devotee, in this moment of so much uh, stress, how can we act as um, giving this understand how how to act in this moment of uh, complete? Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. If somebody is, you know, because of somebody's mistake, say a devotee's mistake, uh, somebody else's pet gets killed. And they are traumatized by that. How do we help them at that time? Yeah, See, each each them. each each person is different, yeah. and each situation is different. So there is no set formula. If you see that when uh, Chitraketu is grieving, 
at that time the sages come and give a strong dose why are you so attached you know whose son is it whose father is it the son himself come back and speaks so that is we could say a strong shock treatment but when abhimanyu passes away in the magic script in the mahabharat uh, krishna does not give any philosophical instruction krishna says that grief comes upon everyone o arjuna in this world but the wise act in a way to decrease others grief not to increase it o arjuna see all your brothers are grieving right now don't act in a way that will increase their grief arjuna was so upset he was shouting at his brothers you know are all your weapons just ornaments why couldn't you all of you protect my brother my son so krishna consoled him at that time krishna did not give any philosophical instruction krishna did not say hey have you forgotten you are not the body or the soul <laughs> <laughs> so we have to see uh, what works with what person when we are dealing with people it is uh, there is no set formula sometimes some people just uh, need a shoulder to cry on and then they cry for some time and then that crying is also a part of healing so, part of healing see sometimes we say uh, crying and tears are a sign of ignorance that is true that is especially when that person has no spiritual knowledge and has no spiritual orientation in life but at a emotional level when there are relationships involved and say if we lose a loved one if then there is a there is a sense of loss over there there is a emotional wound at that time and emotional wounds are just as real as physical wounds if say i may have a strong desire to serve krishna but if i fallen down and i have fractured my hand then if i try to pick up a prudang with that hand or if i try to pick up a book distribution bag i can't do that so i have to rest that hand till it recovers similarly when people have emotional wounds because of something that happens in life they need time to recover so uh, grieving is different from lamenting lamenting means just go on obsessing this this happened this happened this happened this happened it's like a endless loop that goes on but grieving is a healthy way of uh, processing the event uh, like say when a if a devotee passes away then we have a memorial where other devotees come together and remember how nice that devotee was so that way those that hurt that is there that is processed and that is the healing is helped and we still acknowledge that we value that person and it is a loss for us that is gone, that the person has gone away so it's not that that for some people emotional healing may take some time and for some it just you know letting them vent their grief is the way uh, the emotional healing takes place in the bible there is a there is a time for grieving and there is a time for celebrating there is a season for grieving there is a season for celebrating sometimes in life there is grieving that comes and uh, that that can be you could say salutary or therapeutic it helps us to heal but if somebody keeps grieving doesn't doesn't emerge out of it at all just keeps doing it again and again not just one day two days not just one week two weeks months after months somebody has passed away a year ago and still they are just grieving and not able to do anything and then you have to understand you have to move on with life so it depends on the level of the person and it depends on our relationship with them how best we can help them so sometimes just letting them end their grief helps sometimes helping them process that grief speaking some philosophy may also help that sometimes our mistakes may have serious consequences i i one devotee in the police and he was tell, in the traffic police and he was telling me that there was this boy uh, there was a baseball he was driving a car and there's a baseball match which he was you know update he was watching on his uh, mobile and suddenly something happened in that baseball match and his, it was unexpected move and he just started looking at it and the car veered off and on the footpath somebody was there and that person got hit now it is a now just we all may we shouldn't but we all look at our messages look at our phones when we are driving but in that case a small mistake has a terrible consequence so what can we do sometimes life is like that that uh, small mistakes have terrible consequences so what we have to make sure is that we don't continue the mistake okay this a led to this big reaction and i can say oh I sh- if only i had not done a that is good but just reliving the past Uh, continuously lamenting the past that is also a mistake so 
now when somebody is grieving they can be somebody is crying they are crying because this happened that is see, because the event happened the crying that is that is good that can be therapeutic but if i blame myself and i keep blaming myself for that oh i made a terrible mistake i'm such a terrible person okay you made a terrible mistake uh, but you know, if you continue lamenting you are making another mistake at that time it's like say it's like i'm walking along a road and somebody has warned me you know be very careful there's snakes over here in this forest trail very careful and then a snake comes and bites me and the snake has bitten me oh you know what a fool i am i should listen to that person why did i come on this trail i am such a fool i never learn oh the snake has bitten me well stop now go back and try to get the snake poison out <laughs> isn't it the snake has bitten okay it is a mistake but now don't make a bigger mistake by just lamenting about it so sometimes our we do make mistakes and sometimes it may be a big mistake it may turn out to be a big mistake but whatever it is lamenting about it can make that mistake bigger still so we have to help that person uh, sometimes knowledge of sometimes philosophy understanding that it may be because of some karma that this action had this consequence and you don't blame yourself so much it was not such a serious mistake from your part but because of some circumstances this reaction came that kind of philosophy can help them to process it and we can give parikshit mahad example a small mistake sometimes it can, it can be a big consequence of that so uh, if the if sometimes people just need a shoulder to cry and then they get over it sometimes <laughs> some philosophy can help them to process the event and we don't lay the blame on them we don't lay the blame on tally on karma we say that karma plays a role you also reaction also play a role you learn from it but just because there is a big consequence that doesn't make you a big offender because in your case what you did was not a big mistake it was a mistake somehow it had a big consequence so don't blame yourself so much just move on in life you know, sometimes in life we we do some small good thing and such a big result comes up you know sometimes we just go for book distribution and it happens that so many people are interested over there and so many people take books now if i start taking credit i am such a great distributor <laughs> next day i go and nobody takes books <laughs> then i start thinking i am a useless distributor <laughs> no our effort is a part but there are other things also that play a part so that's why is understanding that we are not the only doers that is important that is helpful in keeping perspective okay thank you yes do we have time okay yes <laughs> okay yeah I, yeah last question will and i think tomorrow i'll speak shorter and we can have more questions because there's a lot i know which is still to be explained yeah tomorrow i'll keep short uh, shorter class yeah go ahead so uh, <coughs> so which my question is uh, when we actually take a from bhakti project is the consequence of the project is our past karma also an influence in the con- consequence <laughs> if we take some devotional projects does our past karma play a role part in whether the results come out i would say yes now krishna uses the past karma in a way that is favorable for our spiritual growth and for others also it's like we may say that there may be two very exalted devotees but you know one may have thousands of disciples other may have just a handful of disciples now is it the spiritual potencies that this person is very advanced they have so many disciples this person is not so advanced they don't have so many disciples it may be it may not be also some people by their past karma are meant to be popular and they would have become popular even if they had not been devotees now they are popular and now they are devotees so they are, they are very influential as devotees now we don't want to be judgmental and attribute oh you know this person has so many disciples just because of the past karma they have no bhakti we don't want to say that in the process of bhakti when you start practicing bhakti in the material world you know, the results that come what part of that result comes because of the material aspect the karma and what part of it comes because of the bhakti we can't say so we can become very judgmental sometimes either because we may think that somebody has got big result they must be a great devotee and somebody has got no result they may be a poor devotee but it's not like that some devotees may have great devotion but they may just not have the inclination towards uh, you know cultivating people uh, guiding people they may have great knowledge and great devotion but then so that's why they may not have any disciples but so that doesn't uh, that doesn't uh, 
reflect on their devotion so as far as we are concerned i would say we just do our best and sometimes results come sometimes results don't come so uh, we don't have to necessarily uh, hold ourselves in all ordinarily responsible that way we can say that shri prabhupada tried for so many years in india no results came was that a part of was that his karma no, prabhupada is a pure devotee it is krishna's plan so we we don't have to get too much into that analysis but it it does play a factor sometimes so we we can't say that the caliber of the devotion is reflected in the in the material in the way the result is manifested at the material level so the two may be connected but the connection is elusive so best that we do our service and if in a particular area we are not getting the result then we use our pragmatic intelligence maybe you know this is not where i meant to work let me do something else so bhakti sanjay thakur told shri prabhupada that told in the general disciples if nobody comes up programs preach to the walls but then prabhupada did not keep preaching in india he came to america he could have said no even if people are not listening i am i am following the instruction but he wanted to follow the instruction in a way in a way that it brought material result so therefore we have to be careful uh, that if somehow we find that say if i am not very good at management then i may want to do service for krishna but it turns out things keep going wrong keep going and i am on the other hand good at preaching good at doing programs cultivating that let me let me do that so we can see the lack of results not just as a result of karma just a lot of krishna's plan for me purification that's also true but we can see the lack of results also as pointers one pointer sometimes krishna may just want us to persevere in that service till we get the results sometimes krishna may want us to use our intelligence and find out where we can be more effective and do that so there's no black and white in this our karma plays a part krishna's plan plays a part and our own abilities also play a part so the we we should just use our intelligence and think how i can be best effective in my service okay thank you very much shri prabhu pad ki jai gaur bhakt vrind ki jai jai gaur prem anand de thank you hare krishna shri chaitanya prabhu ki jai shri prabhu pad ki jai